Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Herb, could you lead us in the uh, Christ our Passover, please? Got to put your mic on, Herb. Okay. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come into the resurrection of the dead, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Today's psalm is Psalm 22. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow, shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. And all who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to your people, yet unborn, the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from the first book of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. And everyone, and everyone who is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved, but that we, he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he is, has given us of his spirit. And what he has seen and do testify, the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God. And they abide in God. So we have known all and believed that the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God. And God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have for him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Gretchen, can you please lead us in the first song of Isaiah? Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples and see that they remember what that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst is in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the time, I think we should go ahead with the gospel. Okay. My sermon is based on the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So let's let's. Oh, did I, did I did not read that? Let me read that then. I'm sorry. Okay. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to all the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in a chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I? I, unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before the, his, its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with his scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is the water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on with his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Astos, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and, what, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's epistle says that God's commandment is this. We should love one another. And that our love of God is to be offered not in words about how much we love God, but in deeds for people. For many of us, it is easier to love from a distance than up close and personally. Sometimes it is easier and more comfortable to see the forest rather than the trees. Sometimes it is easier to cut a check to a relief agency than to love or take care of our neighbor next door. Sometimes it is easier to say a prayer for people in another city than to physically be present in a community meeting locally. And then again, sometimes it is easier to ignore those in need who are far away, saying we have plenty of needs among our own families, friends, and fellow Americans. Yet, to believe in Jesus Christ is to love one another, regardless of how near or far, how familiar or foreign. In the first reading, Philip demonstrates how it is to be done. Done one at a time, one person, one situation, one event. We are to look at the trees and not the forest. Ministry occurs one-on-one -on -one by joining faith and love together with the help of the Holy Spirit. It might be through a hospital or homebound visit. 20 minutes in the parking lot next to your car with a parishioner. A chance meeting in an aisle at the grocery store. Phone calls work too. It might be a note to an estranged acquaintance. Cookies delivered and conversation had with someone who is lonely. Helping the elderly neighbor with shopping or yard work. A smile for a stranger we encounter during the course of a day. The call to love is for us to be there for another. This certainly happens corporately in offerings and projects, and they are very important. But it is most effective when it is one-on-one, -on -one, when we tend to each tree instead of the entire forest. Wherever we work, play, attend school, or volunteer, there are many lives, one at a time, we can touch and befriend in the name of Christ. Certainly, the money we offer for natural disaster relief is crucial. The prayers we make for those who have died and those in need and desperation are also vital. But our call is not to respond to crisis only. We must and we will. But the work we do one-on-one -on -one in sharing our faith by sharing Christ's love day by day is our task. Sharing our faith and loving those who are far away and those who live in our own backyard. So start where you are. Christ's promise is that the Holy Spirit will guide and lead us. In the Acts of the Apostles, Philip shows us how it is done with a Gentile outsider before it was acceptable to invite non-Jews into the faith. When the Ethiopian eunuch asked, what's to prevent me from being baptized? Philip could have responded, tradition. But instead, Philip listens for direction from the Holy Spirit. And thus, Philip meets him where he is, and then proceeds with discernment. Philip encounters the person one-on-one. -on -one. Philip was able to look at the tree instead of the forest of rationales for backing away. Our faith and God's love within us are waiting for an opportunity to be shared one-on-one. -on -one. It is there for most of us that lives are changed and transformed, where chasms are bridged.
Changing the world one person at a time might seem like a real slow boat to heaven, but it is real, the real presence of Christ between you and the other. And these encounters of love are lasting. The love of God, the peace of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Stay with the person you reach out to. And then your faith grows and your ability to love grows so that you offer care and compassion wherever you go and with whomever you meet. And in that moment, you have met Christ in the other and the other person has met Christ in you. Heaven. Not such a slow vehicle after all. Amen. Well, I could you please lead us in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together in the words Jesus to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gretchen, if you could please help with the suffrages. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. We got to put your mic on, Gretchen. I'm sorry. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. We praise, we praise your name. Uh, but Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that lead to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pray today for the sick and the suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. Today we pray especially for Hanita Alexander, Lucy Cardamone, Pat Ferry, Mark Gaeta, Ashley Emerson and Hudson Mize Gaeta, Anna Kerr Good, Beth Whiteside, Parker Mones, Les Kenny. We also pray for Father Tom's daughter, Kelsey Reese, who's be delivering uh, Father Tom a new grandson on Monday. Are there others we pray for today? For Helena. For jo Josephine and the Orlando family. Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> As we pray the uh, prayer for mission under the Anglican cycle of chair, uh, prayer, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. We also pray for Lawrence, our bishop, and for our, our big sister church, Caroline and Setauket, for their rector, Father Tom, and the associate, Elliot uh, Conrad. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers while we offer before you 
from the members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We also pray for those who have died. We commend your mercy to all who have died. And we remember especially today, Helen Walsh, Kathy Donnelly's sister, Nancy, and Franny Pistel's mother, Frances Stark Hayburn. We pray that we may they may uh, share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Are there any other special intentions for today? We pray in thanksgiving for the return of Father Tom and Earl. Um, Herb, could you lead us in the general thanksgiving, please? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all, all whom you have created. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for the immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon us the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen.